Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship at and as Christ Lutheran Church, Sterling Heights, Michigan. And what a beautiful day for our outdoor worship today. A reminder that next Sunday we will be indoors for one worship at 9.30. For those of you who are comfortable doing so, for those of you who are not, we will continue to broadcast the service into the parking lot here. It will won't be a different experience than you have right now. And of course, when it comes time to this, for the sacrament portion of the liturgy, we will bring that to you and serve you that out here too. Our main concern is to keep everyone safe and comfortable and for us to be one community. Part of our liturgy today includes a baptism, a baptism of Rose Denise Karcher, child of God. Rose is the daughter of Amanda Karcher and Josh Moore. And so we lift up Amanda, excuse me, we lift up Rose and her family and sponsors in prayer as God begins to work God's miracle of faith in Rose, not for Rose's sake, but for the sake of the world and, and all of those people that Rose will encounter throughout her earthly days. Let us begin our worship in meditative silence, preparing our hearts and minds for Christ Jesus. I remind us once again that the Christ Jesus for whom we prepare is the Easter Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, the out in the world Jesus, the on the loose Jesus. That means that no one and nothing ever can be or will be the same. We pray together. And so it is that we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with our gathering song, verses 1 and 2 of Wade in the Water. And at this time, I invite forward our baptismal party. continues with the liturgy for God's sacrament of holy baptism. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of holy baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life 
of the world. Rose's parents, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Rose baptized into Christ Jesus? We do. We do. And we ask God to help, help us and guide us. As you bring Rose to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with Rose among God's faithful people, to bring Rose to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world that God made, and to work for justice and peace. Again, Amanda and Josh, do you promise to help Rose grow in the Christian faith and life? We do. And we ask God to help and guide us. I don't know if you can tell from out there or not, but Rose just wants to be about all playing in the water already. That's, that's what the fussing is about. That's okay. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Rose in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? And people of God, do you promise to support Rose and to pray for her in her new life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Our liturgy continues with the profession of faith. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I, I renounce them. them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe I in God, God the Father God. Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of of resurrection. Praise you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At this font, holy God, we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all of creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God now and forever. Amen. Rose, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you're welcome to stay there and play as long as you'd like. Yeah, that's okay. You can let her play. That's okay. <laughs> there you go. The worshiping assembly belongs, excuse me, continues with the words emboldened. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. We pray together. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Sustain, Rose, with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Rose, Denise, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Rose, if you enjoy baptism that much, she's going to have a good life. I think she already has a great life. But you would just take the whole bowl with you. Thank you. All morning. At this time, it is appropriate for us to welcome Rose and her family with applause. Thank you for sharing this day with us. Our worship continues in song as we sing two more stanzas of Wade in the Water. together the canticle of praise. Thank you. 
before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of the time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal words of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 6. In, that, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for the Sunday of the Holy Trinity comes to us from the Gospel writer of John. Glory to you, O Lord. Well, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes, so it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. Yet you did not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, 
God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends and neighbors in Christ, today we celebrate the festival of the Holy Trinity. Recall with me that last Sunday we celebrated God's Pentecost. The day that God poured out God's Holy Spirit on all human flesh. And in the process, God established Christ's church. Filled with the Holy Spirit, the Christian church of which Christ Lutheran Church is a member congregation, filled with the Holy Spirit, the Christian church is called, equipped, and sent by God out into the world to continue serving the kingdom that Jesus established and perfected in his death and resurrection. In short, then, the festival of the Holy Trinity helps link and reinforce God's Pentecost event with the work that God has entrusted to people of faith until Jesus comes again. Let me repeat that portion for your contemplation, for your consideration, and most hopefully for your gospel transformation. The festival of the Holy Trinity helps link and reinforce God's Pentecost event with the work that God has entrusted to people of faith, and that means you, until Jesus comes again. Yet we must be careful today not to turn Holy Trinity Sunday into an academic exercise. Plenty of sermons have been preached, expertly explaining how Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three in one and one in three, co-eternal and co-equal, periochoretically engaged and harmonically synchronized. Interesting to a handful of theologians who live in ivory towers, but after that, so what? Think of it this way. To most airline passengers, save perhaps the engineers who built the craft and the pilots who fly it, to most airline passengers, understanding precisely how a jetliner flies is not all that important. Much more important is that the airplane takes off and lands safely when there are passengers in it. How jets fly is secondary to the fact that jets do fly. So too then is it for people of faith surrounding the Holy Trinity. How the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go about their work in concert with each other is far less significant this morning than the promise, the reality, and the experience that we have when the Holy Spirit does go about its work. And what is the triune God's work? But to bring grace and mercy, peace and hope and love to all people. 17 years ago now already, I was just graduating or had just graduated from Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. I remember the wisdom my advisor shared with me just a few moments before I began my final interview process where I would be sitting in front of a number of church officials, including seminary faculty. Said my advisor, Luther, just so you know, at some point during your final interview here today in the next few minutes, Somebody is going to ask you to explain the Holy Trinity. It's guaranteed. 
They're going to ask you. Someone is going to ask you. Now, listen. If you can't do it, after four years of training, you're going to be in trouble. But if you can do it, you're going to be in bigger trouble. Just say something about God's holy mystery and God's holy love. Just say something about God's holy mystery and God's holy love. Friends and neighbors in Christ, celebrating the Holy Trinity is about the world experiencing the love of God, not figuring God out. Celebrating the Holy Trinity is an exercise for our hearts, not an exercise for our brains. Celebrating the Holy Trinity is about being sent into the world to proclaim God's unexplainable love. Joining God in God's enterprise of reconciliation of all people and all of creation through justice mediated peace. Here again from our Old Testament scripture that Susan read for us just a few moments ago. And I quote, Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send. Friends and neighbors of Christ, the prophets, the prophet Isaiah's words are significant this morning. But here's their significance. They're no more significant for Isaiah thousands of years ago than they are for you. For in the same way that Isaiah was anointed to proclaim God's favor out in the world, so too are you. Called, equipped, and sent by the same Spirit. You are no less a witness, each and every one of you by the gift of faith, no less a witness today. And Isaiah, who is an exemplar from our Old Testament scripture today. I have a feeling that no matter how many times I insist on that for you, I imagine you might not quite totally agree, that you might feel inadequate, not as good as Isaiah, underperforming. Not having the same skills, the same blessing, the same ordination as Isaiah. Not true. Let me explain with another illustration. In 1995, Marianne Franco was in a horrible car accident, suffering multiple debilitating injuries the most serious of which was to her spine. In the days following the crash, Franco's life went blackish gray, she recounted. Everything that she saw was black and gray or some shade in between. For 18 years, Franco lived that way until amazingly, she suffered another accident, this time falling in her Okeechobee, Florida home, further damaging her spine, which required more and another round of spinal surgery. Stunningly, when Franco woke from surgery this time, she had somehow regained her sight and then some. 
colorblind from birth, Franco could now see in color, too. Wow, she said. Just plain wow, she said. Exuberant at being able to see her grandchildren's faces for the first time while kissing them. The medical community is even more amazed than Franco. I've never heard of it, said one doctor. I've never seen it. I don't understand it. It must be one of those miracles, Franco's surgeon allowed. Friends and neighbors in Christ, while Franco's story remains a mystery to medicine, save a theory or two, Franco herself does not fixate on the seemingly miraculous aspect of her life. Instead, Franco is convinced that God has been active the whole time. Said Franco, I believe with my whole heart, not because I got my sight back, but because I had a peace within me whether I could see or not. Friends and neighbors in Christ, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit cannot necessarily be explained. But it can be experienced. And it can be believed. And it can be trusted. And it can be celebrated. And it can be shared. Like Mary and Martha of our illustration here this morning, each and every one of you too is part of God's story of eternal hope in and for the world. Pause with a mind of faith, with a heart of faith, with ears and eyes of faith. Pause and reflect just for a few moments what the Holy Trinity has done, is doing, and yet promises to do through each and every one of you. Beyond your imagination, beyond your knowledge, beyond your awareness. But know that you are no less a miracle, you are no less significant than Isaiah and Miss Marco from our illustrations this morning. For the final movement of our sermon time together this morning, I want to provide just a few moments of a working lab for each and every one of you to experience the Holy Trinity. Daily life can be troublesome and burdensome and painful and heavy and heartbreaking and anxiety and just plain confusing and hard work and difficult. Daily life is like that, isn't it? And so I ask further, what causes you consternation and worry and sorrow? What wakes you up in the middle of the night or keeps you from getting to sleep in the first place? What worry is it about you or a loved one or the world in general? What worry is it that you just can't seem, no matter how much therapy, no matter how much medication, no matter how much technique and effort, that you just can't seem to resolve or to shape? What continues to haunt you and cause you struggles? Friends and neighbors in Christ, into that reality comes the Holy Spirit comes Jesus, comes God the Father, the Holy Trinity, the triune God, into your reality, regardless of what it is. 
There is the Holy Trinity welcoming you, embracing you, loving you, forgiving you, making something holy out of your life, sustaining you, empowering you, giving you courage, giving you safety and security and confidence. In the same way that the triune God interacted with Isaiah, and in the same way that God interacted with Mary Ann Franklin. And now, in that newly created reality, we share the Holy Trinity with the world, just like the prophet Isaiah and Mary Ann Franklin too. Our lives, your lives, becoming a part of the Holy Trinity's narrative of holy love for the world. Amen. Our worship continues in song. We sing together. Give us the humility to recognize that it is your work through us, not our work for you. Now in this place of humility, also give us confidence that our very ordinary lives, our broken lives out in a very broken world, indeed make a difference change the world. Participate in your reconciliation of all of creation. So our prayer time continues in awesome wonder and mystery. We pray together. God, 
we hear in our Old Testament reading today that a hot coal was placed on the prophet's lips. Eating out forgiveness, not just for the sake of being forgiven, but being made now holy for the purpose of proclaiming your goodness, your holiness out. Oh 
up this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, the body for the life of the Lord. Our worship continues with the eating portion of our liturgy, beginning with the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As a sign that through the gift of faith, we recognize Christ Jesus present in this meal to forgive us, but more than that, Christ Jesus present in this meal to fill us to overflowing so that as we go about our ordinary lives out in a broken world, everyone we encounter, they see the light of Christ shine through us. And everyone that we encounter, we see the face of Christ in them. Let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, eat and drink. The table is prepared for you because God loves you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Receive now ascending blessing. The Lord bless you and to keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with the Lord's favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Worship continues with our sending song. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, we sing together.